This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org or the link in the episode description. A practical prayer is a prayer that works. These discussions between Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence dive into the details of how it works and how to work it. Reverend Bill is a New Thought minister and the author of Practical Prayer for Real Results. Your new life begins with a new thought. Carol Lawrence is on a spiritual quest, finding the New Thought teaching after decades on the pulpit in three different traditional denominations. I've got some questions. Together, they're exploring the philosophy and activities that come together from many of the world's religions to create the practical spirituality that is New Thought. Welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni for another amazing conversation. And this time you want to talk about the notion that all is mind. Yes. I want to talk about it. And based on your initial response, when I mentioned (laughs) it, (laughs) I guess instead of talking about it, you're going to sort it out so I can see what it is about it that fascinates me so much. Okay. Well, one of the uh, one of the, the big creative types in the New Thought teaching is Ernest Holmes, and he called his basically his teaching and his textbook are the science of mind, and that puts mind like right up front, and that's exactly what he meant when he says that all is mind. There is one divine mind, and as he puts it, there is one mind. That mind is my mind now. And what he wants to make sure is that we understand the mind that we are thinking with is that same one mind. There's not another one. So when we say all is mind, the important part there isn't so much mind, it's all. All is one. There's one mind, and that mind is creative, and that mind is creating, and that mind has created each of us, and that mind has created the mind with which we are thinking, and that's the same mind. It didn't come from someplace else. It is a a subset of the infinite mind, but it's the same one. We are not separate and distinct, distinct from that one mind. Okay, that's good. That was totally my understanding. But when you your response made me think before we came on, is he going to say something else? You know, because <laughs> like, you know, like, hey, I've been operating on this, and this has been working great for me. Of course, when I first found a uh, science of mind. I didn't understand. Actually, I read Charles Hanel first and he talked about it and it just was absolutely not clear because I didn't have the proper foundation that I needed. So mind, the way I distinguished it is mind with a capital M, which mm. means that's divine as opposed to, you know, the little mind or whatever, with the small M. Right. And as I learned a little bit more and accepted the oneness idea and the the unity and all of that, it works so well for me, like not just magic, but just, yeah, just almost magic Mm -hmm. because I'm a writer and I'm always writing in different ways about things. And there are times when I would get stuck. Of course, I'm not going to say I get writer's block. I'm just not saying that because Mm -hmm. writer's block is indefinite. You know, you could be like hung up for (laughs) We <laughs> whatever. I'm only going to get stumped for a couple of minutes because that's what I said. And when I understood mind as expressed through what I understood as Ernest Holmes' perspective of it, I thought, okay, whatever I want to know or understand is in the mind of God. And this is my mind now, right? This is. Mm-hmm. And so then I envisioned this being, this mind being all around me, like everywhere around me. Mm -hmm. Because in the earlier classes that I took with you, you talked about putting things in the soil. And so I thought, okay, so it's all in this soil, right? It's floating around here somewhere. This is just the way I can understand it. And when I'm searching for clarity on something, then I've said, listen, this is practical. It's here. It's my mind. It's out there. It's not somewhere else. I got to just either reach over here and get it 
focus? Is it, is it on the, don't laugh. Is it on the right? <laughs> is the <it laughs> thought over in the side? Whatever. You know, that I had to make it that practical for me. So so that I wouldn't become frustrated when I can't find the right path that I'm looking for or the right information. So I know it's in mind somewhere and I need to open my the mind. Right. Whether it's open the channel. Yeah, yeah, whatever it is, you know, so that it can come. And it actually does, you know, it that's the reality for me. It plays out perfectly well all mm-hmm. the time, by the way. So and just to discuss the that creative process and how it works, there are three different aspects to the infinite that we are that, that are always in operation. And the one that everybody's familiar with is the one that we're living in, the world of form. And that's, you know, where you get up and brush your teeth. And that's where you have interactions with other people. And that's where all of the stuff is. So the world of form is the entire manifest universe from the tiniest particle that we can imagine to the farthest planet, the biggest galaxy. It is all part of that universe of form. And it's possible for us to live our entire lives just dealing with the universe of form, just dealing at at the, the, the physical experiential Newtonian level of this is where my body lives and this is where I live and this is where my thinking happens. This is, and we just consider it all to be here. And the new thought teaching is about how does it get to be here? And that becomes our relationship and our interaction with spirit or the infinite or the divine or God or whatever we're going to call it. And the notion that we have is that everything in the world of form is created by that one. It is the divine. It is God. It is nature. It is whatever sharing itself as its creation. So there's that creative power, that infinite presence that is individualized as everything in experience. And in fact, what seems to all be separate is only separate from our perspective because it's all God. It is all God. And then the notion is where did it come from? Well, that's where the mind part comes in. The parts that are not apparent to us from our five senses, because we don't have any way of detecting them, is the fact that there is a creative law. And that creative law is creating everything. When that creative law is told to create a new experience for Carol, it does. It responds. It says yes, and it does. When that creative law is told to to invent space travel, the answer is yes, and it does. And stuff happens in the world of form that we're experiencing. And suddenly where there was no space travel before, now there's space travel. Mm -hmm. And then the question becomes, well, what is it that's directing that law? What is it that's directing that creative process that is creating everything in our world of experience? And that's mind. That is what we call consciousness. That is the level of intentionality where that one infinite mind, that divine creative presence, that infinite intelligence has the ability in consciousness to set an intention, whether it's let me plant a flower or let there be light. It's the same. And on that cosmic level, the, the, the creation of the universe level, it was that one infinite creative power, that one mind that said, let there be this manifest universe. And the law said yes. And it started expressing and unfolding and revealing itself as the manifest universe. And Maybe there's evolution going on. Some people like to argue with that. So let's just leave that aside. There's definitely growth going on because there was a generation before my generation and a generation before their generation. We have books. We have stories for a bunch of it. Well, a little bit of the recent part. We have videos or movies or pictures or writing, but it's been going on for a while and the time unfolds and things happen. The interactions happen with each other and it continues going, but that is all that one infinite creative power continuing to reveal itself. So when we say all is mind, it all started as that divine power and presence, that infinite intelligence saying, I'm going to do a universe. (laughs) And everything is coming from that. So everything that exists is that one mind sharing itself in a different way. Mm -hmm. That was not concise, but hopefully I, I captured it for you. No, you did. It was excellent. Thank you so much. And, but it's it's like, it's beautiful, but it's like one of those things in, in my way of 
doing things. You got to understand that first so that everything else makes sense. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It just does make sense once you get that down. But it's very contrary to uh, traditional theology. Oh, yeah. Very much so. However, though, I I have to say this, and I got to like confess before the whole world. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. The more I study, the more I see it in the Bible. Mm -hmm. The more I study new thought, the more I see it in the Bible, which makes me the Bible for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And like I told you before, and okay, here's another thing, confessing before the world. Like when I got, when I just couldn't handle certain things anymore, I was tossing out the Bible Mm -hmm. that was gone. And I picked up other sacred texts and, and other sacred scriptures and found so much consistently in all of them, including the Bible. So then I did a timeline because it's like, it's not like the Bible started everything. Like, you know, certain teaching would like you to think, you know, it, it just, in some ways it kind of brings together or repeats or whatever things that were written thousands and thousands of years before the Bible came into existence. And I started looking at it differently. And I thought, okay, well, this is not something that somebody, you know, like they told me a group sat together at a table and they put all this together. They didn't tell the whole story, right? They didn't. So, (laughs) (laughs) so, all right, forget about that. You know, I mean, that's important. But so then I, I'm studying and I'm listening and studying, you know, and between you and what I read on my own and my ascended masters that I call my mentors. I'm looking at the Bible. I'm saying, it's all right here. So last week you talked about spirituality and religion and you asked me why I didn't see a difference. No, no, because it's all right there. (laughs) I don't know what everybody's all upset about. You know, all of this, you know, we got to figure out how to bring people together and understand it. Come on. It's not all that different. It ain't that deep. We can talk about it. Peel back a layer. Don't be scared. You know, one layer, two layers. It's all right there. Yeah, and we can, but if you start with the assumption that you know what the Bible is about and you read through it from that perspective, as you have noticed for 35 years on the pulpit, that you can tell the story that you want to tell pretty consistently. And it's only when you're ready to understand it from a different perspective that you get to see the other stories. Okay, exactly. But here's what I absolutely believe. At some time, sitting in that pew, you had a question, a couple of questions, maybe more than a couple of questions. You let it go, but they stick there in your mind. Maybe it's distur- something is disturbing your peace, you know, or whatever. Peace is the thing people are really into. Like they talk about prosperity and money, but you know, everybody wants peace of mind. And it may be, just maybe, your peace is disturbed by unanswered questions. How about that? And mm-hmm. you don't have to make any big, deep decisions, but maybe something that's, you know, causing you a little bit of, hey, yeah, I really wonder about that. Hey, check that out. You know, I'll tell you this. When I was serving in the United Methodist Church, this is in the 90s. You know, the big thing was homosexuality in the church. And everybody's just gone all ballistic over that. And I'm thinking, I don't see what's wrong with y'all. Like, why are y'all all upset over this? It's not like this is anything new. And then why are you acting like this is something from outer space? Okay, it's your... (laughs) Let's come on. Let's just be fair about this. You can't tell me the people that were opposed and being ugly about it didn't have a question. Somewhere along the way, line, if you're hanging out with spirit and God or whatever you want to call God and you're, you know, all religious and sort of religious, you had that thing had to bother you somewhere along the way that maybe the way we're treating these people is not right. Maybe hmm. when we're calling everybody brother and sister, you know, while everything is good, right? Everybody who is the same, so to speak is together, we're all happy and talking about love. But when you're challenged with 
difference. Now your belief, what you're saying is challenged, but you'd rather not say that, right? You'd rather say it's wrong. And to me, that's when you stepped out of the realm of God, the realm of spirit, the realm of love. You stepped out of that, okay? You need to fix those questions. That's what I think. It's a challenge well, to say yeah, you got to love you everybody. You right? can. And for everybody, the, the, the last straw is going to be different. When I abandoned traditional religion, I was 12. I think I just turned 12. And the reason was even more fundamental for me. Let's take a break and we will talk about pulling the ripcord on our religions. <laughs> <laughs> Learn to put practical prayer to work in your life. The steps are simple to learn and let you begin to get real results to create the life of your dreams immediately. Reverend Bill Marcioni's widely acclaimed book, Practical Prayer for Real Results, gives you a clear summary of the new thought principles behind practical prayer and the series of easy to understand steps found in the most effective prayers from religions and spiritual practices all over the world and throughout history. Practical prayer is not a replacement for your religion or practice. It's a technique to make the work you do in consciousness even more effective. The book includes 40 prayers on various topics that you can adapt as needed and use as your own. Practical Prayer for Real Results is available in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook on Amazon or at b the light Dot com. That's b the light.com. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. And we're talking about pulling the ripcord on your religion. Yeah. So I was 12 years old. I was in confirmation classes and you know, United Church of Christ. And there were volunteers. You know, my friend's dad was teaching a class and there's other people in the church who were doing this. And they're answering all of our questions and giving us very sound explanations about why the stuff that they're teaching us from the Bible and from our tradition are all true. And I got to one question. Actually, there were two. There was one that was important which was, how do you know Jesus was the only son of God? Mm. And they said, you just have to take that on faith. And I said, everything else you're teaching me is based on that being true. <laughs> you have built a house of cards on top of something that you say, I just have to believe you. So you haven't proven anything. And this, to me, there's no difference between this and complete hypocrisy because you haven't explained anything. <laughs> and furthermore, you're not going to try to explain anything because you're just claiming that I have to accept it as true. <sighs> oh, you were a gutsy kid. Well, I it's like there's some things that when they're obvious to me, it's like, what am I going to? I, I I couldn't pretend anymore. So I told my parents, I can't pretend anymore. They said, oh, you shouldn't go. <laughs> 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 I was like two weeks away from confirmation. They had already given me the Bible, which I still have. <laughs> but they, but. You had great parents, though. You know, that, that makes a huge difference. It baffled me. That was like the only time I can remember them saying, oh, you, you don't want to do this? Okay, fine. It's like, who are these pod people who look like my parents? Uh, you know what? Maybe they had questions, too, and their, their kid had guts enough to, to articulate them. Yeah, well, I came to understand in hindsight or afterwards, because there was part of the story that I didn't know, is that my mother... And her family, when they escaped Nazi Germany in 1939, had been Jewish before they left and had embraced Christianity. It was a blended family, so they already knew all the language and all the holidays and stuff. But they embraced their Christianity because it was really dangerous to be Jewish. Hmm. And so there's my mother. She was eight when they left. But I think it's pretty difficult for somebody who's Jewish to not know it by the time they're eight. <laughs> but yeah. she, wound, she wound up teaching Sunday school. Hmm. So to me, I was in her class. And so the willingness to go with the truth that you believe, I think that probably informs why there was that much flexibility in my spirituality and my choice of religion. 
rather than somebody who's like, we've always been Baptists. Of course, you're going to be Baptist or mm-hmm. Jewish or, you know, fill in the blank. Because when you come here, you don't get a whole choice. You know, you just, <laughs> <laughs> you just roll right in. And nobody along the way, which is interesting to me, nobody along the way says these simple words, this is one perspective. You never mm-hmm. hear that. This is all there is. And when you feel constrained by, you know, like being in a box, this is all there is. There's not that, there's no opening, right? So you pull the ripcord, as you said. You know, yeah. you say, like, I'm, it's like, this is, I'm out of what, here. I don't know what, I don't know what's on the other side, but this is enough of this. And I say that respectfully, really. There are some times mm-hmm. that I'll sound like I'm, I'm not bashing anything. I'm just saying that there's more to be considered and you don't have to believe it. Just consider another point of view. That's all. Mm -hmm. I have developed in my later years a tremendous respect uh, and appreciation for the stuff that's in the Bible, especially the things that Jesus said and did. Jesus was very clearly the son of God, and he said so. And he also said some other things that we didn't really focus on. That's one of the other things that you've pointed out is that once you've taken a perspective, once you say that, oh, well, this is the way that we need to look at this, you can't see it from any other perspective. But Jesus said everything that he did, we can do. And that I completely believe. Now, am I able to do it to the level that Jesus did? No, not up until now. Although there's been some absolutely awesome things that I've been involved in, which are completely inexplicable ways that I'm using that infinite creative power that creates everything. And I'm using that one mind that imbibes, abides within me to create something new and spectacular. I mean, we talk about that at uh, New Thought Philadelphia in our Sunday celebrations. Every week we do prayer work stories. This, this is what I prayed for. And this is the cool thing that happened. To when I read the words that Jesus said, you know, I read, I listen to them, of course, now from a different perspective. They aren't words that somebody said, like poetry and, you know, articulated by a God man who is so far from anything that I could ever hope to be, but bringing it in closer and saying, this is a truth that can be mine as well. Maybe not. And you just said, you know, maybe you can't do all the things he can do right now in your life. Okay. But I don't have to do them all right now. Right. I don't have to do that right now. All I'm trying to do is manifest this particular thing Mm -hmm. or understand this particular thing or straighten out this particular thing. And the Christ mind or, you know, accessing that Jesus mind, that Christ mind or that image or whatever you want to call it is all I need at this moment. Mm -hmm. That's good. You know, and so next. And I don't see it as that big a deal because Jesus said you could do it if he said, see, listen, don't tell me something. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I'm I'm like a little kid in that way. Don't tell me something and then say it can't really happen. I'm just, you know, I'm just kind of saying it or it's true. But, eh, you know, well, it's not kind of sort of true. Listen, if Jesus says I can do it, then I can do it. Mm-hmm. If I'm not doing it, it's something that I am not thinking properly, something in the way. But hey, Jesus said it, fine. And I'm going to leave it at that because the next thing I was going to say could clearly be misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> well, then let's go back to talking about accessing the one mind. Okay. Because it's all one mind. And one of my examples is the God calls. Because, you know, God calls 30 seconds. It's a little pithy, inspirational thing. And a lot of people find it remarkably difficult. They would take days or hours to figure out what their God call would be about and how to get it down to 30 seconds. And it turns out that's one of my gifts. You know, I was in radio and I was in advertising. I can write a 30 second spot. I can write a 30 second bit. The God calls are about 30 seconds long. And Mm -hmm. rather than slaving over them and figuring out like, what's the production schedule going to be or any of the rest of that, my process is to say, okay, time to record God calls. I turn on the recording software and I just go within and I invite spirit Mm -hmm. to suggest what the God call is about. And something comes to mind and I hit the record button and 30 seconds later, well, actually about 45 seconds later, it's recorded. (laughs) There's a little bit of editing to do because I like to to trim them down for my ums and uhs and 
and mm-hmm. sidetracks. But it's, it's not an hours long process. It's a minutes long process because I am able in my belief system, I I'm owning that I have the ability to access that. And then I'm letting the one mind fill us in and let the recording happen. That is so absolutely magic. It's not really magic, but that's my word because I'm still so enamored with what spirit has shown me. You know, it's just fabulous to be able to, when you pray, a lot of times you'll say, turn away from the things that are distracting you, the things in the world, you know, and you could gloss over that. But to be able to turn away from everything else and kind of say that I'm in a place right now and this is what I want from spirit or this is what I'm doing and that's what happens. That's a great thing. You know, that's You don't have to pray for hours and hours and days and days and get other people to pray for you and then hope that maybe somehow, some way, it's going to happen. It's like, no, just calm yourself down. It's out there or in there, whichever way you want to look at it, Mm -hmm. and let it happen, turning away from other things. Yeah. Yeah. So, And sometimes if it's in our wheelhouse, if it's our our gift, then it becomes effortless and astounding to other people. I have on numerous occasions tried to learn to play the piano and I have been unsuccessful. And it comes to my attention that that is probably one of those things that's not in my wheelhouse. So I could probably struggle and figure out how to play the piano badly to the point where I can make my way through a few songs. And that's not the way I want to do it. So I don't. And I do other things you know, Mm -hmm. like record God calls. Let's take a break. And when we return, we will do a prayer on being aware of our oneness with that infinite mind. Get inspiration in an instant. God calls are the gentle and uplifting moment of truth to help you remember that the bright light of God's love is shining right now as you. It's your God call. With Reverend Bill. Start your two week free trial today, and you'll get a phone call four times a week from Reverend Bill with an uplifting half minute message filled with insight, wisdom, story, and fun. Let your light shine. You can answer the call to listen to it live or let it go to voicemail so you can hear it later. After the free trial, your subscription is just $5.95 a month. The details are at godcall.org. God calls are disruptive, intentionally. Whenever you write something, put on a gold star. They take you away from your routine to remind you about the truth of who you really are. They come at random times between 8.15 a.m. and 6 p.m., so you won't be expecting them. And somehow, the message is exactly what you need to hear at the time. Magic is loose in the world. It's a moment of motivation in the middle of your day. Find out more and start your two-week free trial now. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol. You're with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. Going yeah, to do good a conversation prayer. about the one mind. Yeah. Yeah. We could go on, though. Oh, we can. But that's what other episodes of the podcast are for. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bookmark it. We'll get back to that. I will. Because oh. right now what I want to do is a prayer. And we're talking about one mind. And there is one mind. And all is that mind. And the question might come up about, well, what does that have to do with me? What does the fact that there's one mind have to do with the way that my life is unfolding or the experiences that I'm having? And the answer is everything. And so the prayer is to be aware of that one mind and to be aware that we are expressions of that one and that the mind with which we are thinking is that one mind. Because that opens up a huge range of possibilities. In fact, an infinite range of possibilities. So, and it's because we're using that one creative power, that one mind to think a thought. And we are also using that one mind to be informed. That's even better than Google. You can just, when there's something that we want to know, we can turn our attention to the one mind and invite that one mind to inform us or to guide us to the knowledge that we're seeking. And then suddenly, boom, there it is. It shows up. 
And it's remarkable the number of people who have stories about that as something that they were looking for for hours or years or decades. And suddenly when they were thinking about something else and they opened to a new possibility, there it was right in front of them. That happens to us all the time. So let us turn our attention to the one mind, that one infinite intelligence, that divine mind, the, the mind of God, the mind of the creator, the mind that knows everything. There is just this one mind. In the beginning, there was only the one. Infinite intelligence, limitless energy and power and potential. And it made the conscious intention to begin sharing itself. From the outside, that looked like the Big Bang or the description of however you're interpreting the scripture that said in the beginning, there was darkness and void and God said, let there be light. That one set the intention, let there be. And the creative law began responding immediately. That infinite creative law said yes. And the light began to shine and the universe began to expand and the good and the good and the good continued to unfold. Everything is that one mind taking its own specific and particular form. Every person everywhere is an expression of that one. And the mind with which we think is our own individualization of that one mind. There is no distinctions, no separation. There's not my mind over here and then the mind of God over there. There's the mind of God that is everything that is everywhere. And my mind, the mind with which I am thinking that I'm aware of, is my own particular access point to that infinite mind. So there are two things that we know. We know that everything that is knowable anywhere is also knowable everywhere. It has to be because it's one mind. So anything which I am seeking, any knowledge which I am opening myself to is available. And that infinite mind, that divine presence is ever willing to share itself as and through and in me. That guidance is available at any time. And because I know there is only one mind and that mind is my mind now, that mind belongs and is part of each of us now, we're thinking with that one mind. We are using that one infinite creative power to create our lives in a new and fresh way. So whatever good it is that we are inviting, as we implant the intention for that good into the one mind, that infinite creative law that always says yes is responding. So as each of us sets the intention now and in subsequent moments, getting clarity about exactly that which we are seeking, which we are desiring, which we are opening ourselves to, that infinite creative power is responding. It's saying yes. And this good is coming into being. This good is coming into being. It's happening now. There's no delay. There's no wait. There's no having to earn brownie points or deserve it. There is no hesitation required whatsoever. It may be something that seems upfront to be completely impossible. We have no idea how that's going to happen. So we suspend our disbelief. We discard our need to know how, our desire to understand the specifics of the circumstance and set our intention to open to that the feeling, the tone and texture and timbre of that new experience and allow that infinite creative power that creates everything to create the new experience for us and to fill us with that feeling. And that's how love unfolds and that's how growth happens and that's how the law works. So I'm grateful for the awareness of the law. I'm grateful for the good that's coming into being for and through and as each of us. And I'm grateful for the stories we get to tell about it. And so with gratitude for all of this good, I speak this word on behalf of each one listening. And I release it into that creative law, the one that always says yes, knowing without any question whatsoever that it once again is saying yes. It's saying yes. This good is on its way now. And I let it be. And so it is. Amen. Practical Prayer Podcast with Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence is a production of BeTheLight.com. Be-the-light.com. Where you can find more information about practical prayer for real results. Our theme is by Music of Wisdom. You can learn about the spiritual community of New Thought Philadelphia with daily guided meditations, weekly celebrations of spirit, and Reverend Bill's classes in practical spirituality at NewThoughtPhilly.org.
This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org or the link in the episode description.